Okay, today we're going to learn in the um, in the Torah, this week's Torah portion, which is called Vayikra, and it talks about uh, the sacrifices. Not all the sacrifices, but it gives a good beginning. And one of the sacrifices is most of the sacrifices are brought from animals, right? Brought from animals. We learned yesterday about the birds, bird offerings, and we learned that there's a uh, sometimes offerings from uh, cows, oxes, and from sheep, and from goats, and that's it. That's that's all. That's all the sacrifices there are from the animals. Even though there's a lot of kosher animals, there's deer and there's other kosher animals. That those, that's all you can bring. Then there's also uh, sacrifices which are brought from the plant. Plant. First of all, there's oil. Olive oil that comes from plant life, right, from olives. And then there's also uh, wine. Wine is brought every day. That also comes from grapes. That's plant. But the most outstanding one is the, um, the um, bread offerings. And there's four, maybe five types of breads that are, are brought to the holy temple. And um, all of them are usually, uh, what do they call, uh, leavened bread. Leavened bread. In other words, no, I, I, I tell you, I don't remember what it is. Anyway, it's, it's bread that's, that, that doesn't rise up. Doesn't rise up. And only on uh, Passover, uh, only uh, there's one type of an offering, which is called a toda, Thanksgiving offering. And that has bread which does rise up. I guess that's leavened bread. Leavened bread rises up and unleavened bread doesn't rise. How can I always forget this? I don't know. But anyway, that's okay. That's where we go. What, what, what did you say last time? The, the, any case, not important. Now we're talking about these offerings. Next week, we'll talk about the Toda offering, the Thanksgiving offering. That's all for four things. But one of the main um, uh, ingredients in the Toda offering, which is also in the Shlomim, Shlomim is a type of what's called a peace offering that you bring four different types of breads called mincha. So let's have a look at these mincha, this offering, bread offerings, bread offerings. Nefesh, a person, kitakriv, when he sacrifices. Korban mincha, a bread offering to Hashem. Solit yye korbano, it should come from wheat. We're going to see Rashi is going to say solit means Homer it says minchastam. He has to bring solit, which is what? Um, so solit only means chitin, means from wheat. Like I mean, solit is chitin. It has to come from wheat. There's one time it also comes from barley, and that's what the sota, <coughs> sota offering, and also the omer. We'll talk about that. That's how called love shaman. You have to pour on it oil, and you put on it levona. Levona is translated used is frankincense. Frankincense. It's, this has to come with all the all the offerings, especially the, these offerings, the meal offerings. You put a piece of this frankincense on it. Put a levona. Rashi says. You pour oil on it, on the whole thing, and you put on lavona. Where do you put the lavona? You put this lavona, this frankincense, on only a little bit of it, on one one part of it. It's, it's all in a bowl. This is this is the the flour, and you put a kometz, a kometz of lavona. A kometz of lavona is like three fingers worth of the lavona. This is one of the hardest services in the holy temple, lavona. And the way it looks like this, see, you take your it's something like this. I mean, not a coin. This is very difficult to know how to do it. But it looks like this. Let me tell you this. This is the way I understand it. He takes the, his hand, he takes the, sticks it into the flower, and he takes it with his three fingers, and with his thumb, with his thumb and his little finger, takes off the extra, which is on both sides, and that's called a hand uh, handful. What's in these three fingers? That's called a handful. So this finger and this finger don't work. 
just grabs on with these three fingers like that. Sticks it and grabs on. And so that's called a puts that much Lavona on it. Comets, it's called a comets. Lavona. Why do we see this? Because in Reboy, Acha Reboy, the Torah, El Alamaet. That's what it's, so in other words, you only take, you don't put it everywhere. You only put, it says, Yatsak Allah Hashem. You pour on it oil. It could have said pour on it oil and the Lavona. But it says you put on it oil and you put on it Lavona. So it comes to add on another thing, means that you have to do it less. The, the oil you pour over the whole thing. But the, this Lavona, this incense, you just put it in one little corner of it. Okay, let's just do the simple meaning here. Bring it to Aaron the Kohen. And Aaron now takes from this whole entire thing, he takes from the flour. It's not baked yet. He didn't do anything to it. He takes one comets. He takes the one hand bread, like we said before. Hand full, three fingers full. Malaykum so, full three fingers from the solta and from the shamna and from the oil. I'll call Lavonata with this piece of Lavona of frankincense that he has. Viktira coin as askarata, and he burns up this little bit of it on the altar. It is a flame fire offering, a pleasing spirit. To God. What does he do? Says that what's the Azkarata? This is the um, comets, this little hand breath that he takes. <clears throat> okay, so what does he do? He takes one hand breath of this, of this um, uh, flower that he's got. It's all saturated with oil. He takes that and he takes that little piece of frankincense that's on there, the whole thing, and he burns it up on the altar. And you notice that over here it says, it said it's a pleasing sp- smell to God, pleasing smell to God. And Rashi says over here, that what does this come to teach you? One second. That God is pleased with the, with the simple offering, in other words, how much does meal cost? A, a bag of flour, you go bag a bag, buy a bag of flour, how much does it cost you? know, a, a half a dollar, how about a dollar, two dollars. How much does it cost to buy a bird? And a bird, let's say it'll cost ten dollars. How much does a sheep? A hundred dollars. A, a cow costs a thousand dollars. So it says a, a person that brings this simple offering, it's also a pleasing smell to God, just like the most expensive. The main thing is the heart, where a person's heart is at. If he's just bringing the small offering because he's cheap. <clears throat> so that's one thing. But if, if that's the best that he can do, then the best of the poor person is exactly the same as the best of a rich person. What's remaining? So I know there's this whole bowl that he takes, which is a serita a four, something like, I don't know, two pounds of of uh, of uh, flour, as the, only one little handful gets burned up on the <clears throat> on the uh, altar, and the rest goes to Aaron, Kadosh Karshim Ishi Hashem, and he can eat it however he wants to. He Ishi Hashem, Ein Lem Chilak Bo Ela Laachar Matos. First of all, you have to you you have to burn this little part of it, this hand, this uh, three fingered fistful. Of, of flour, and then the rest of it goes to Aaron. So in other words, this was not cooked at all. It was just raw flour with oil on it, and that is called a solet. It's called an offering of just a solet of minchat um, solet, it's called. Okay, next. The key takriv korban mincha ma'afei tanor. What if you offer up a offering 
which is baked in the oven. Solit chalot matzot. It has to be solit, wheat, chalot, loaves, matzot of unleavened bread. Belulot b'shemen, soaked in oil. Or there's another type. It could be rikike matzot. It could be rikike matzot, meshuchim b'shemen. They are much uh, thinner. But it's basically two different forms of bread that are made in the oven. It says, one big difference is the chalot, they are uh, soaked with oil. And the rikikas, those are just like, like matz, matzah, but they're smeared with oil. Some people say that they're smeared twice. Some people say that they're smeared once. But nevertheless, that's the right, different opinions. We'll see when the Kohanim come, the, the Holy Temple is rebuilt, as we'll see exactly what they do. Then everybody will know what they do. I mean, the all the, the, the departed Kohanim will also raise up with the raising of the dead. So they'll know what to do. Know what, to do. what if you make a sacrifice, Mincha ala machavat? That is a um, like a frying pan. Solid bulul v'shemen also has to be this uh, wheat which is soaked in oil. Matzatia and it will be unleavened bread. In other words, that does not rise. Like I said, the only time that you can have leavened bread, bread that is that does rise up is only on the holiday of Shavuot and in the Toda offering, which we'll talk about next week. There's going to be 10 loaves from the 40 loaves in the, in the Toda offering. 10 of them are made from hummus. But except for that, like we said before, if you remember, we learned yesterday that every sacrifice has to have salt with it. And these are also, they have to be they have to have salt. And the, the Mincha, in fact, that's where it's mentioned mainly is with the Mincha prayer. With the mincha. We'll see that. <clears throat> and um, it's forbidden to bring chametz or anything sweet into the temple. So chametz is forbidden. So all these offerings are all, also the, 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 the face bread, it says it was soft the whole week, and it was thick, it was thick one tefat, but it was not made from, from uh, it didn't rise. It was also matzah. It was matzah, it was unleavened bread. So if you bring alamachavat, then you bring solid, which is soaked in oil. And this is also has to be matzah. Patototopitim, you break it into pieces, and you pour, pour on it oil. Mincha, this is a mincha offering. Machavat. Then there is what's called a marcheshet. A marcheshet is a deeper frying pot. That's almost like a, uh, like a, like a boiling pot, like boiling. Marcheshet. Then solid it has to be the same thing <clears throat> from wheat, uh, wheat flour soaked in oil. It has to be made. Marcheshet, they said this is deeper than a machavat. <clears throat> because it's deeper, so shemna sabur, there's a lot of oil in it. And it is not touched by the fire. The machavat is like a frying, it's frying. It's frying. The oil is only a very small amount. And the main thing is that the <clears throat> the fire directly it uh, the fire hits the pan and that's what cooks it. But here it's more the oil that's cooking it. therefore mincha asuya Therefore it says that it's boiling. Everything and, and it's a lot softer. That's why it's called rochesh, marcheshet, marcheshet. Anything which is soft, rochesh means it moves. It's soft. Okay, after you finish making these offerings, whichever one that it happens to be, whether it is cooked in an oven or it's cooked in a shallow frying pan or a deep frying pan, you bring this mincha offering from those to God, he kriva at the Kohen, you bring it to the Kohen, and he takes it to the altar. Right? Up to now, you're just making these things and giving it 
to the coin. So up to now, we've only talked about one, the, the actual sacrificing was done by the coin. That's the uncooked flour. You just bring them what's called the solet, minchat solet. You bring them just the, the flour that has oil on it and that piece of frankincense. And the coin takes this three-fingered handful from the solet, from the flour, and the frankincense, and he burns it, and the rest he takes home. With all these now, the coin is not yet um, sacrificed anything. He just prepared them. He just prepared all these, made it in an oven, made it in, in the, <clears throat> either it's loaves in the oven, or it's like wafers made in the oven, or it's made in the deep frying pan, or the thin frying, the thin frying pan. Okay, now what are we going to do? You bring it to the coin, whatever you made, And the coin takes it to the altar. Okay, you bring one of these four types that you made to the coin, right? Either the two types that are cooked in the oven and the two types that are either in a shallow frying pan or a deep frying pan. And he gives it, the owners give it to the coin. And the coin, he takes it to the altar and he brings it to the south west corner of the altar. Now, what's the southwest corner? As you go in to the Holy Temple, so the ramp of the altar is to your left. You can't go up to the, to the, the ramp. Only the coin can go up to the ramp. So you, you give it to the coin, the coin takes it to the ramp. The ramp is on the, what's called the south side. So that's the left side. That's the dromit. And Ma'aravit, that's the side of the altar and that's facing the, the Holy of Holies. This is right where the, where the laver is that the Kohanim washed their hands from. So that's the opposite side you can't see. In other words, he takes it around to that side where you can't see. They ream a coin mina mincha. And he takes from this mincha, it's as, at, as, at, as, He takes a, just one handful from the <coughs> mincha offering and that little part, that little three-fingered thing, that he gives, he burns up on the altar, a fire offering, a pleasing spirit to God. Right? The comments, that's what he takes. No terror, then everything that's left, Laron Lebanov goes to Aaron and his sons. Kodesh Kodeshim Meshia Hashem. So there's three types of eating that was done on the altar. This is on, on the in the sacrifices. A, a, this is especially stressed in the Shlomim offering. The Shlomim offering, which that's spoken about here also. Three types of eating. The altar eats on the fire. The Kohanim eat. And in the Shlomim, also there's parts that the owners also eat certain parts of it. That's why it's called Shlomim, a peace offering, because everybody gets <coughs> satisfied from it. The, the, the altar, God, so to speak, gets his part, and the coin get their part, and the owners get their part. But the fact of the matter is, is because it's all a holy offering, so it's really, all of it is actually going to God. God just wants some of it to be burned up on the altar, and some of it to be. All of the bread offerings that we made, to God, lo chametz, cannot be made chametz. We learned this yesterday. This is, this is how yesterday's class began. He calls so orva, called devash, all, uh, some, anything that makes rise up, yeast, sore, that's called sourdough. And called devash, or anything that's sweet. Lo taktiru meimeno yishel Hashem. That cannot be made a sacrifice to God. Right? This we did yesterday. And here's the last thing. Oh, it says, Korban Reshit, the first fruits you can bring to God. That's on the holiday of Shavuot. They bring the first fruits, the uh, dates and, and figs and sweet things. And also they bring chometz. They bring two loaves of chometz. But to the, the, the Mizbeach, you can't bring for a pleasing spirit. Next, and every time you bring a mincha offering, you also have to bring salt. 
Lo tashbit melach, you cannot refrain from bringing salt. Do not omit salt. Brit alokecha from the covenant of God, from yemin chatcha, al kol korban chatcha, all sacrifices, you have to bring salt. And that's what we learned about yesterday. So we learned, therefore, that the sacrifices which are brought to Hashem, they can also come from the vegetable world. And that's what we learned about today. Uh, we'll learn about also the wine offerings, but that we'll learn about later. And on the holiday of Sukkot, they also make water offerings. And if you remember, that was part of this thing about the salt, that salt comes from water. God made a covenant with the salt when he made the division between upper the waters and the lower waters when he created the world. And the salt is comes from the water. God promised it that don't worry, you get a consolation prize. True, I'm dividing you and making it to the lower waters. But the salt from the water, I'll bring that on the altar. And that's what it is here. All the sacrifices have to have salt with it. And that's what we learned the big mimer in the morning. We'll finish tomorrow, God willing, about salt, the importance of salt in the altar. And so let's just do one little thing over here. The Let's see if we can do this here. The Orachayim. No. Oh, here it goes. Nefesh ki tikra mincha says, a soul when he makriv mincha. Here, Rashi brings down the only sacrifice where it says nefesh, a soul, when he brings a sacrifice, is by the simple offering, the most inexpensive mincha. It says, who usually gives a mincha offering, a bread offering? Poor people. God says, mala ani alecha, I am treating it to you as though you are giving your soul. Right? In other words, the main thing is the person's attitude. God says, I'm treating it as though you're giving your whole soul. If <clears throat> Let's just do a little bit of this pre uh, Kliyakar. Who, this, he brings down Rashi. Who is it that brings a poor offering? Right? Poor people, they bring only a mincha. Says God, I will treat you as though you are giving your soul. This is in the Gemara and Menachot. For this reason, it says in Tzav, next week's Torah portion, Matzot Teochel. Matzot, the Jews ate Matzot when they left Egypt. Lechem Oni. It's called poor bread. For Oni, a poor person, he calls a shayach el ani. This is all, all of these sacrifices, really the main one, it's mainly directed to poor people. Who are the poor people? Everybody. Anichna bateva. But poor people, they are humble by their nature. Ke'isa hamatzah, like matzah. She'en ola that doesn't raise up. al like this, is explained, all of these sacrifices. Call a kodem, kodem a pasuk, whatever is first in the sentence, who kodem lebo liyadei chet, is the first to come to do a sin. In other words, first of all, it talks about bringing axes. Then it talks about bringing sheep. Then it talks about being birds. Finally, it talks about the poor man's offering, bringing just flour, bread. And that's what it says in Deuteronomy of Yishman Yishirun Ba'yibat. The Jewish people, the more successful they become, the more egotistical they become. There was the famous for bringing Hasidic gathering of the Lubavitcher Rebbe that was in, what was it, 1957 or something? Something like 1956. And the Rebbe said that the soul comes into this world in order to be tested by God. And if you pass these tests, so it elevates the soul to a higher level. And the Rebbe said the worst test of all, most difficult test of all, is the test of richness. A person gets rich, and he stops serving God. 
he becomes a big egotist, and that's a terrible test, <clears throat> and not, you don't even know it's a test. But automatically the person becomes thick. That's like it says, Yishman Yishurun Yibat. That when the Jewish people they get fat, so they reject God. And then the Rebbe said, but nevertheless, everybody wants this test to be rich. So the Rebbe said, whoever wants to be, have, be rich without having any test whatsoever, in other words, the money will only be used for godly things. You'll be a humble person and everything. Raise your hand. That's a whole long story, but there were three people, some people say four, that raised up their hands and they became very rich people. And they became, they were, they still remained humble, simple people. They gave a lot of charity and such. Nevertheless, the people that are rich, successful, that they have the ability to bring a cow, as usually their sins are the, the first ones. They, they, their sins are big like cows. Call Mishu Gadol Michabiro, like it says, anyone who is greater than his friend, but Osher, but Kavod, with richness or with honor, success. Yetzru Gadol, his Yetzru becomes bigger from the simpler person. Bariah, what's the proof? From what it says, Asher Nasi Chatat. That's the end of this week's Torah portion. It says, Asher, that when the Nasi, the Nasi is the king, if the king does a sin. So it says, doesn't say ki, like when. It says, Asher, when. Asher also means to be happy. Asher also means happy. But here it brings a little bit different. The word Asher also means al Vadai. Like something that's mushar, it's it's uh, you say verified. Lafi shenisiyato, because when a person becomes a king, it brings us the two sins. Huh? <clears throat> you think that king of the Jewish people? Come on, he's he's going to be a holy person. So if you look and you see in the history of the Jewish people, especially in the the upper ten tribes, all the kings one after the other, they were all that you say. Uh, the, the big sinners, what can we do? And they made everybody else sin also. <clears throat> Not for Ryan, what's the proof from what it says? Oh, there we did with this. Oh, sorry. Yetzir God of Mechavero. Alkin, therefore, is cured tequila. First of all, it talks about the cows. And then who gives the cows? The rich people. And afterwards, it talks about sheep. That's the way of the regular, let me say, middle class people. They bring sheep. And afterwards, it talks about birds, that a poor person brings birds. And after the words, it talks about the poor people of the poor. They're the poorest of the poor. A little bit more. Kliyakar. The Kliyakar was, uh, Rev, what was his name? Ephraim Shlomo Lunchitz. That was his name. And he was like a, a pupil and a, how do you say, a, a, a partner with the Maharal Mi Prague, the Maharal of Prague. He made a human being. You know the story? The Maharal Mi Prague, he made a human being. Also, it says in this, there, there was Amoroyim in the, in the Talmud, they also made a human being. It says that Rabbah created a human being. Anyway, he created a human being, which is, that's not, you don't see that every day. And when the Maharal Mi Prague passed away, he became the head. So he was very well versed in Kabbalah and in secrets. <clears throat> but also, his explanation is beautiful. So here's, Therefore, it says, Babakar, it says when you sacrifice a cow or an ox, it says, It says that the insides, the intestines of it are not like the bird. The bird, you throw away the intestines. It says you threw them away to this Shefach Adeshin, this place on the side of the altar that we said that it miraculously sunk into the ground. But by the, the cows, they, they offered up the intestines, but they cleaned it out first. They took out all of the waste from the intestines and they washed it out. I know, kirbu shall korban, the inside, the intestines of the sacrifice. of ish amok, lo But the inside, the sacrifice, he washes. But sometimes a person, the inside of his heart, he doesn't wash. But utumaso bo. And therefore, a person's egotism still remains inside of him. Because usually, people that are rich, this causes them to reject God and his commandments. 
He doesn't wash himself out. Maybe on the outside, he has a beard, maybe in a, in a kippah. But if he's rich, then all of a sudden he goes crazy. Money makes a person crazy. But not that it's good, it's good to be rich. Uh, exactly the opposite. Everybody's supposed to be rich. But you're not supposed to be crazy. You're supposed to have the money, not the money has you. But the, the middle man, uh, let me say the middle class man, is a little bit more pure. So therefore it says, the a rich person, he brings a cow, and the cow, you have to wash out the incense, the in, intestines, but you don't wash out the intestines of the rich man, just this cow. So it shows to she, see that maybe, it goes to show that maybe he brings a sacrifice. The sacrifice is okay, but the person who brings the sacrifice, namely a rich person who brings a cow, a rich person, so probably, he's not so pure. What about the people that all they can do is bring a sheep? So he says, he's a little bit, he's a, usually they're a little bit more humble. Therefore, it says by him, Akira of Karatz, your Chatz Bamayim. Therefore, it says you can wash them out, out. You can wash the intestines out with water. Lichlol Gam Kirov Ish. It says, Hakira Ver Kirch. What's there? It says, by, by the cow, it says, Kirbo. It's intestines you wash out. By the sheep, it says, you wash out the the in, insides, not its insides, not the insides of the animal. It says you wash out the insides, implying also those of the owner. What does it mean? Not you don't have to wash. It doesn't have to you know take an enemy or something. What it means is that he has to. The simple man, he's more likely to clean out his spiritual intestines, his spiritual insides. It doesn't say just the wash out the insides of the animal, but it says you wash out the insides. That's all. He is more pure, therefore it says, like it says, that all of them, I'm sorry. That's, oh, okay. So the, the, the pointer keeps skipping on. Oh, here it goes. Because of his, because he knows that he's not at the, at the top of the totem pole, so he's, he'll become a little more humble, and God will forgive his sins. Uh, but the poor person that get, that, it, that he's lacking more, he's consequently he's also more humble, and he's also more clean on the inside, and that's what it says. Hasirat morato. That's what it says with the, the 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 birds that he removes the intestines totally and he throws them away. He to throws away all of the bad stuff that's inside of himself. This is, means that he's he. He throws away his bad heart, and he fixes himself up in inside because he becomes like a new person. That's like the bird. That's the bird. Like the bird, it says that he throws away the inside completely. So he, what, what is the, what is the Kliyakar saying? He's saying the insides of the sacrifice, that shows what's going on in the inside of the person to a certain degree by the cow. The person brings an ox, that's usually a rich person. So it says over there that you you wash the cow's insides, indicating that the person still remains the same egotist. By the sheep, it says you wash the insides. Oh, that shows that the, both the insides of the person who brings the sacrifice and the animal are washed out. By the bird, it says you throw away all the disgusting insides. You throw it away. That shows that the person becomes a new person. Right? But why? Because it's easier for him. He's more humble. He doesn't have as much money. But Dali Dalot and the most poor people, that they are more humble and their eyes are always lifted up to God. They're dependent on God totally. By him, it says, Nefesh Kitakri. By him, it says that he gives over his soul. Not only does he throw away the bad that's inside of him, like with the bird, Elokol Nafsho. He gives over his whole soul to God. Kulo, he's he becomes a totally new creation from his humility. Him humility. Therefore, it says, Minchazu Kodesh Kodeshim. It's holy of holies to God. What does it mean? Yoter mi Hashem. This is more than Kodesh Kodeshim. It is even more holy than the other fire offerings to God. It's interesting. It says that Rabbeinu 
HaKodesh. In the Torah, it says that it says that if, if the Mashiach will come from the dead, he'll be somebody like Daniel. But if he'll come from the, or it says it will be Daniel. There's different opinions what it means. But it says that if, if Mashiach comes from the living, then it'll be Rabbeinu HaKodesh, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi. So it says Rabbi Yehuda Nasi that he was fantastically rich, fantastically rich. And he said that before he died, he held up his hands and he said, God, you know, you and I both know that I never got any pleasure from this world. From all the riches that I have, I never once got any pleasure from it. He gave charity. He did good things. He was tremendously rich. But he used his richness and his position only just to spread Judaism. People would give him honor and respect. And then they would listen to what he has to say about serving God. And this is the ten fingers that represents the ten spherot, ten aspects of his soul. So none of it ever got pleasure from God. So that's the ideal. The ideal is that everybody should be rich. You should be rich, and you should, but the richness shouldn't make you egotistical, blow you up. As we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. So that's the difference between the rich man's offering, the the cow. <clears throat> it says the insides are, are of the cow get clean, but not of the person. The, the sacrifice of the the intermediate man, <clears throat> average Jew, he brings a sheep. Says by the sheep that both of them get washed out. Of a poor person, that's even better. It says that the insides, all the bad stuff, gets thrown away, becomes a new person. But by the poorest of poor people, that all he can bring is just a bread offering, the most humble of all. And that's somebody like Rabbi Huda Nasi, right? That even though he's fantastically rich, he still realized, felt that everything that he really had nothing. Everything he had was just a gift from God. By that type of a person, it says that he gives his whole soul over to the Creator. As we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow, so hope to see you tomorrow, 8.15 in the morning for Hasidus class. Shalom, Ovracha.